to Lessons from the Playroom. In this podcast, Lisa Dion will help you explore the little things that make a big difference in play therapy. Lisa is the founder and CEO of the Play Therapy Institute of Colorado and the creator of Synergetic Play Therapy. You know, sometimes therapists get all caught up trying to study big theories and mastering techniques to help children like me. But sometimes it's the little things we show you along the way that make the biggest difference. Join Lisa as she teaches you some of the little lessons that children are trying to communicate to you so that you can help us in the best ways possible. And on behalf of all the kids you work with, thanks for listening and believing in us. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the next episode from Lessons from the Playroom. If this is the first time you have listened to this podcast, welcome. If you've been on this with me for a while now, thanks for listening again. This is the bi-weekly podcast part of the Lessons from the Playroom series. The other is a monthly free webinar where you can join me live or you can request the 24-hour playback where we get to dialogue, have discussion about some key topics in the play therapy community. So today we are going to jump into a topic that I actually have never heard anybody present on before. So I'm pretty excited about today's topic, which is how to engage dads in the play therapy process. We talk a lot about working with parents, but we tend to talk about parents as a whole. And I think sometimes we tend to emphasize the moms in the parenting dialogue because it's typically the mom that brings the child into play therapy. So today we are going to get into working with the dad. And in order to do that, because I am not a dad, I am a mom, I have brought on a guest speaker today that knows a lot about this topic. So we are going to welcome Dave Garrison to the podcast today. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So Dave is a dad. He has four children. Dave is also a therapist and has been working with men, trying to just support men, right, in their journey and understanding their psychology and all that good stuff. Right. Yeah, just focusing on men and men's issues Mm -hmm. and uh, and what's really important to them, for sure. Perfect. So I invited Dave on to this podcast because he hasn't taken his children to play therapy before, and I thought with his expertise in understanding men and being a dad that we could have some interesting dialogue about not only what it would be like if he took his children to play therapy, but helping educate us a bit about the psychology that's going on for dads and with men and we can have a little bit of a discussion here on how we can incorporate that into the playroom and the play process. Cool. So, um, yeah, let's even just start there. So do you want to share your age range of your kiddos? Sure. So I have four kids. So my oldest is 20 uh, and he's in Seattle. And then I have a 14 year old boy, a a 13 year old boy and an 11 year old daughter. And the three of them are still at home. Great. So I want you, as you're answering these questions, I mean, you can even think about them at this age or maybe even when they were younger. Yeah. Right? And so if at some point you had taken any of your kiddos to a play therapy process, what's the first thing that comes up for you as dad? Yeah. Even just thinking about that. So the very first thing that comes up for me is around that there's something wrong with me, that I've done it wrong. I've really messed this up Um, and if only I was better or if only I was different, if only my partner was better or different, um, then we wouldn't be making this drive over to the play therapy. Mm -hmm. I I think that's an important piece. I talk a lot about that just working with parents in general that oftentimes the parent is more anxious than the therapist when they first bring their kiddo. Yeah. Sometimes the therapist, we get all caught up in our own world, wondering, are they going to like us? But actually, the the reverse is going on where the parents are wondering, am I going to be judged? Right. Yeah, that's exactly, that was my next piece is, 
you know, is like, what's the judgments that are going to be seen, uh, you know, as I'm filling out the paperwork and someone's going over, you know, my responses to the paperwork, what, what's going to be their judgments? How are they going to start to see me? Um, and as, and as a man and in, in working with men, one of the biggest themes that I see is that we really protect and we guard against shame in this experience of, of, of shame. Uh, so I can actually see, and even as I just think about this, you know, taking the drive and then getting out of the car and hustling everybody, you know, and here's the paperwork. Ugh. And, and as I'm filling out the paperwork going, what are they going to think of me? What are they going to think of me? And as I'm getting closer and closer and closer into getting into the play, the playroom, it's, I'm becoming more and more guarded and more and more shielded. Um, I'm really bracing for, in some ways, bracing for battle and bracing for impact. Mm -hmm. So let's just start there. Let's dialogue about what are some key things that play therapists can do to support dads as they're walking in already with the shield up. Yeah. For me, one of the first things that comes to mind is just this little piece of therapists just recognizing that the dad is anxious, is nervous, is coming in, wondering if they're going to be judged. Just even to hold that, I think, can help um, the therapist be a little bit more sensitive yeah. and a little bit more open um, and just be more aware of um, what will it take to help the parent feel welcome, to calm their anxiety, to settle. Again, getting out of the therapist's own way yep. and out of their own self-absorbed, oh my gosh, what are they going to think of me? And let's look at are the our clients wondering what we're thinking of them. Yeah. So. And I think acknowledging dad's strength and dad's courage to show up today. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure it took a lot for you to show up today, dad. And I just want to acknowledge that effort. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and some of the sacrifice that dad may have had to make, you know, changing the work schedule or getting time off or whatever that might be. Uh, you know, just acknowledging you know, Dad, you made an effort and, and recognize that it takes that strength or that courage just to even get to this point. Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge step forward for men. So, Dave, me not being a man, <laughs> but having a sense of men, yeah. two of the things that I feel are important for men are appreciation and respect. Oh, yeah. Yep. And that lands yep. big time for men. So in addition to the courage and acknowledging, you know, what it took to be there and the sacrifice, maybe there's even something in here too of, of even offering some kind of gesture or words of, of the respect that the therapist has yep. already for the dad to be willing to even show up in the first place. Yeah, that's huge. And the appreciation. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. And again, appreciating the effort and just appreciating the willingness to show up. Uh, for sure. And that respect goes so far. Um, and it starts to lower that shield because now I don't feel like you're here to attack me. I actually feel like you're, you're more likely coming alongside of me to help me. Uh, and so that automatically creates that paradigm shift uh, from it's me against you uh, or and I'm going to guard against that shame to, well, hey, wait a minute, maybe you're not the enemy, uh, and maybe there is an opportunity here. Mm -hmm. So one of the next pieces that comes up in the intake is the, how to explain the play therapy process <clears throat> and how to even begin to, to talk to really either parent about what's going to go on. And I've noticed that the moms tend to need a different type of explanation than the dads and mm. listeners i'm totally owning that i am being completely stereotypical right now it's just for sake of the conversation we know that people are colorful and that it doesn't fall into this black and white male female mom dad category so just acknowledging that but just for sake of the conversation there tend to be trends right that the mom tends to be the touchy feely i mean really you could just say I'm going to support your child in feeling and learning about their feelings and we're going to play through their issues and struggles. And most moms will be 
I love you. Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> and dads will sit there scratching their heads thinking, I'm going to pay you for what? Yeah. Huh? Huh? You're going to play with my kid gonna, and, and I'm paying you that? And somehow playing with my kid is going to help my child stop doing whatever it is, this thing. And so I find that women tend to be more process oriented and then the males tend to be more goal oriented. So I find when I'm talking to dads that I have more goal oriented language yep. and I use a lot of language that sounds a bit like, and we're working on these skills yep. and we're going to, I'm going to be teaching your child this. I find that they connect more through that language. Do you want to speak to that? Oh, I think you're completely right. And, and again, just reiterating, you know, there's some stereotypical view uh, or a stereotypical slant. Um, you know, I think for most men, it, it's like, where are we going? And if you can tell me where I'm going, then I'm more likely to, uh, to go with you, or at least I, then I have the, the choice to make the decision if I want to go with you or not. Um, you know, it, and so, uh, so when you are setting out those goals or these are the outcomes that we're shooting for, for men, again, it's this sense of comfort of going, okay, got it. I might not understand how you're doing that, like processing with my kid or processing feeling, what, you know? <laughs> but, uh, but going, oh, so you're going to get my kid to stop doing or start doing whatever that is. Okay, I can get behind that. So here's a question for you. Sure. Given, and again, this is stereotypical, but given that most play therapists are female, so we don't think like men, what is a suggestion you would give to a woman, Dave, <laughs> of how to think like a man, <laughs> or at least how to begin to orient their language more towards what, um, what a, a, a dad could hear. Yeah. You know, I think, I think, again, most dads, what they really want is the absolute best for their kiddo. And and I think from a, from a female perspective, so first off, it's really difficult for a lot of men still in society today to reach out and ask for help. There is a social stigma around, I need help, and a social stigma around, my kid needs help. Because that's a reflection back on me as dad. I must not be doing something right. Um, and so, I, again, I go back to reiterating the it's important to acknowledge dad for the efforts that he is making. I think too, the piece around, hey, we're in this together. So it's not that you gotta figure this out by yourself because again, that's part of that shame piece, right? I can't do it on my own. There must be something wrong with me. Now I'm reaching out for help. Again, a sign that there's something wrong with me. But having a female, play therapists come around and go, hey, we're in this together, and I'm here to support you, I'm here to join with you, I think that's a huge step for dads. Uh, and again, because dads really do want the best, or most dads really do want the best uh, for their kids. Healthy dads want the best for their kids, mm -hmm. right? So. And then what advice would you give for the male play therapist? Because that's a different type of connection, potentially. Yeah. And I think for the for the male therapist, it's uh, you know so it's not a competition because I could see it easily and even somewhat with the female therapist, uh, but with the male therapist that, that you're not getting into competition with dad and trying to you know so that dad doesn't feel like he's trying to, to get one upped. Um, you know I know better than than you do for your kid. It's, I just know different for your kids. I love kid. that. I just know different for your kids. Yeah. That's cool. It's not that I know better. Listeners, it's... write that one down. That's a good little <laughs> one. I just know different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, and I think, again, I think dads can really appreciate when you're coming alongside them as opposed to, um, you know, a, a, this competition or coming at them. Mm -hmm. So. Well, and I could imagine that as a dad if I was feeling insecure or questioning my parenting skills or 
or feeling shame or guilt. Mm -hmm. And then here is this play therapist who happens to be male, who my kid loves. Yeah. Um, this <clears throat> individual seems to totally get how to connect with my kid. Yeah. I feel like I'm fumbling around in that department. The emotional world isn't as easy for me. I might, like you said, the competition, I could see how I might feel jealous. I might feel insecure um, relative to the play therapist. Um, I may feel intimidated by the play therapist. I could see that how that might actually prevent me from opening up even more. Yeah. And if you continue to play that out, how dad knowingly or unknowingly could actually subvert and, and, and I mean, the whole process in general, right? Mm -hmm. Set it up for the kid to fail eventually because dad doesn't want to be seen as the failure and somebody else you know, has the victory, if you will. Yep. Same. One of the things that um, that I've talked about in other podcasts is how important it is as therapists that we get ourselves off the pedestal right from the beginning. Yep. And I, th I think this is really important with what we're talking about, that if we position ourselves as the expert, it actually over the long haul is will backfire because what goes up eventually must come, come down. down. Yep. <laughs> and so the parent, whether it's the dad or the mom, eventually will want to do something to try to knock us off the pedestal, yeah. to empower themselves and to regain their footing relative to us. And I can see how as a play therapist, and I'm thinking of this as a female, if I haven't positioned myself with, with the mom or the dad, but in this case talking about the dads, in a way where the dad feels like I'm a partner, feels like I'm willing to acknowledge that the dad has wisdom, that the dad um, is making some great parenting decisions, mm -hmm. that I'm not sitting there judging the dad, thinking, what a jerk, what a loser, right. whatever, yep. right? That I'm, that I'm willing to find where the dad's strength is and build upon it and help the dad feel that too. Yeah. That that's actually one of the ways that I can get myself off of the pedestal because in a way I think that the dad also needs to feel like the expert if not like the expert. Right. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. Mm -hmm. Completely agree with all of that. Mm -hmm. I, I go back to, you know, I was kidding around with you a little while ago when I said, so what's the thing that the female therapist could do to learn how to think like a guy? Yeah. And and I'm reflecting on, you know, we all we all have places in our own life where we feel intimidated and we feel scared of being judged um, and we just feel uncomfortable in the unknown and I think that the therapy world can feel even more uncomfortable for some males yeah. right yeah. and so maybe it's a therapist to take time and pause and reflect on those times in your life when you were in situations where you felt like a fish out of water yeah. it was not what was comfortable for you. It was not easy for you. It, you felt intimidated. You felt scared. You felt like you were going to be judged. And to look at what would have been helpful for you in those moments and to really look at how it, you know, possibly had someone taken the time to really walk you through the process, explain to you what was going to happen next, talk to you about the expectations, uh, but in a way that was partnership creating, not, you know, you better do this or right. this. Yeah. Uh, but if they had taken the time to relieve some of the anxiety around the unknowns, how might that might have helped you feel more confident and willing to step in and engage? Yeah. And even just that acknowledgement of, you know, Dad, I imagine this, this could be challenging for you or this might be uncomfortable for you or just, you know, kind of calling out what you imagine Dad might be feeling. Uh, and... And, and in doing so, giving dad permission to actually feel it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling anxious, uh, you know. So dad, this must be kind of a nerve-wracking experience or, you know, this looks like this could be a little nerve-wracking for you right now. Mm -hmm. And then dad can actually relax and go, yeah, it, mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. This is really, you know, I am that fish out of water. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah. Uh, but but calling that out and, and actually being able to see the dad, Mm -hmm. as a person, like you said, who's having this experience mm -hmm. um, and just acknowledging their experience. Mm 
Yeah. Again, I think that goes a long way to to reducing that anxiety, that stress, that shielded, that guardedness. I think the other thing that would be important for us to touch on too is, you know, because it, it is, it's often the moms that bring their yep. their kiddos. That I think sometimes as therapists we also let that off off the hook. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sorry about that part of it. Yeah. And we don't <clears throat> take the time to reach out, and we don't take the time. You know, sometimes the the conversation really stops at looking at the mom and going, so, you know, would your husband or partner or this, your child's dad like to be involved? No, they're good. I'll just, I'll pass along the information. Yeah. We're good. You just say working with me here. And then we go, okay. And not to say that that's good, bad, right, or wrong, but I think that sometimes we don't take the, the, the next step to go, but wait a second, dad's important too. Dad's a huge influence in this child's life. And so are we going to do what we can, if nothing else, to just call and say, hey, Dad, I want to introduce myself because I want you to know who's spending time with your child. Um, There's an invitation here if you want me to check in with you, if you want to meet, just so that there's the invitation. And Dad gets to go, you know, thank you, but no thank you. But at least the effort was made, respecting the dad enough, caring enough to even say you're important too, and I'm at least going to say hi to you. Yep. What you do with it is up to you. Yep. Any thoughts on that? So first off, there's all kinds of statistics about, um, about when dad's not involved, right? Uh, alcoholism goes up, drug, drug use goes up. Uh, high school dropout, you know, goes up. So there's all these statistics about when dad's not involved, what kind of impact that actually has on a kiddo. And I get that those statistics are about dads who's, who is completely removed. But I also think it plays a part, and, and it's important, just like you said, to let dad know, even if it's just a phone call, dad, you're an important piece in this. Mm-hmm. There's also this piece with dads that go, you know what? This is your problem, mom. Um, and rather that's, you know, if, if we're a married couple, hey, this is yours, or hey, X, it's your problem, not mine. Um, and and so it, it's also a way sometimes for, for men to dodge that responsibility, you know, that they do have. Um, but being able to call up and go, you are important, and you are playing an important role, whether you want to or not, you are, um, and, and that invitation because you're important, because you play such a crucial role, and you might not even realize how crucial, it's important to us. It's important to me as therapist. I I want you to come in at least once um, so that you can have an experience about what we're trying to to do here, what we are doing, what we're trying to accomplish here. That's great. So as you think about had you taken one of your kiddos to play therapy, or if you did at this point, any other pieces that come up for you that you would want the therapist to be aware of? Hmm. Um, you know, I think, I think, and I think this is just in general is is offering offering that hope, offering that the acknowledgement of the, your efforts, and we're not going to give up. We're going to keep working on this. Um, and so it's kind of that, that looking into the future a little bit is, I think that's really important for men. Um, and it's also part of the setting the expectation of going, this isn't just a one and done, right? So with the men that I work with, oftentimes I'll use an example of working out at the gym, right? So you don't just go to the gym and do, you know, one bench press and go, now nah, look at me, I'm, you know, I'm ripped, Right. It's no, there's, there's instruction. I got we have to teach and there's training, which means you have to do it over and over and over again. And so really working on, you know, Hey, we're going to keep after this. I'm going to keep instructing. We're going to keep training. Um, and, and I think that's just a crucial, and it's, and I think it's a really comforting place for men because they go, Oh, that makes sense. Right. So in the instruction and training of my children, uh, it's just like the instruction and training that I need, you know, for my physical body or, you know, my job or whatever else. So you just did something that 
I think is brilliant and is, I think, something that all of us listeners need to really pay attention to, which is that you spoke in terms of what was meaningful and understandable to the dad, yep. which I think is another place, and I know I'm generalizing here, where female therapists can get caught, right? Because sometimes, you know, we use female language. <laughs> we use female metaphors. Yeah, yeah. That's not dad's language, right. potentially. Yep. And I think that finding out what's actually important to dad and play therapists, we love metaphor, right? Find out what's important and use that metaphor for how you're explaining the play therapy process, how you're giving feedback. I was recalling as you were talking about that, a dad that I uh, was working with who was having a hard time understanding why his daughter just wasn't able to get this one particular thing quickly, right? Mm -hmm. She was, he really, he, he had a high value on, um, athletics and on physical stuff and yeah. that was not her strength but she was still doing soccer and gymnastics and some things like that and it was taking her longer right to get the skills down sure. than dad yeah and he was like i don't know why like it's easy why can't she get it and this was right he was stuck in that thinking and every time he came to my office i noticed that he came wearing running shoes some kind of running attire mm -hmm. and I had picked up in conversation that he was a marathon runner. Uh -huh. He was a runner. There you go. Right. Yeah. And what I realized was that I had not been using language that fully made sense to him. And when I started to weave in the metaphor of a marathon, yeah. how long did it take you to be able to run the length that you need to, to do a marathon? Is that where you started? Right? No. Right, we started back at let's see if we can go for thirty minutes. Yeah. And then we bump it up to forty five minutes. Yeah. And then there's different training and all of that. And eventually you were able to run marathons. And it, it's like magic happened once I started speaking in language that actually made sense to him. Yeah, completely. Which I think is again just going back to one of the the large, I think, lessons here is um, to be aware that there is a different thinking that's going on. And it is more goal oriented. It's not as process. It's not as touchy feely, warm and fuzzy. Yep. Um, and it does require, I think, for some therapists more effort because that's also not the natural world for a lot of play therapists. Right. So there is more effort on taking time to outline goals, outline what this looks like, how we're going to accomplish this, um, taking the time and just not assuming that dad gets it. Um, being mindful of making sure again that they feel respected and appreciated um, in the process. Yeah. I think those are just some key pieces that I think are really important for us all to keep in mind. And the last piece that I would offer in that same list is, is asking, do you have questions as opposed to expecting dad just to come up and ask the questions, mm. right? And letting dad know and normalizing, it's okay if you do, mm -hmm. right? And you can ask at any time, and I'm going to just keep checking in with you. Um, again, because a lot of dads might just shake their head, nod their head yes, right? And all of a sudden it's like, well, wait a minute. No, I don't know exactly what's going on, or no, I'm not quite understanding. Um, but so permission. Yeah. You're hearing a lot of permission. Yeah, permission to ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. And, and checking in. A lot of normalizing whatever awkwardness or whatever the experience is. Yeah. yeah, sounds great. And I would say this, just really in closing, is that when you capture dad, when you actually have dad on your team and dad's part of the team and he sees you as the team, that's a mighty force. Mm -hmm. That's a mighty force for change, mm -hmm. for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Can I quote you on that one? You sure can. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, listeners, I don't know about you, but I just definitely learned some stuff. And next time I've got dads in my office, um, and if not, just new intakes, I'm going to rethink a couple things that I've been doing and strengthen some things. Um, so, Dave, really appreciate your expertise that you've brought to this. Thank you so much. Thanks yeah. for having me. Really you are, appreciate you are that. so welcome. Yeah. So again, listeners, these podcasts are designed for you. If you have topic ideas, feel free to send us an email or to find us on our Play Therapy Institute of Colorado Facebook page. 
And until next time, be well. And remember, you are the most important toy in that playroom. Thank you.